Okay, um, let's get started. Um, thanks for joining this webinar. Um, this is our one of hopefully the first of hopefully many webinars um, laying out some proposed changes to our schema um, as we go forward uh, um, and make changes. I, ho I hope we'll um, be able to do more of these webinars. Um, before I, I dive in, uh, just some housekeeping information. Um, right now, you're you are muted just to keep the noise down. Um, but please ask questions in the question box or in the chat box, and I'll try to answer as we go along. Um, and hopefully, we'll have um, time for discussion if anyone's up for that at the end. Um, I'm going to just go into presentation mode and, and go through some slides outlining what we have. Um, what our plans are for our next schema update. Um, but again, it, you know, if, if anything pops into your head, please ask and, and I'll try to answer as we go along. Because we've got a lot to go through. Okay. So I recognize a lot of the names in the participants list. I know a lot of you are, um, are very familiar with our metadata schema and have been um, members for a while, but if anyone's new to CrossRef, um, over the past decade, 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 our metadata needs have really shifted quite a bit. And um, we started out just collecting basic bibliographic metadata to match DOIs to citations. And now we're really expanding beyond that and we very actively distribute our met metadata and people are finding um, interesting uses for our metadata. So we now support a range of metadata. Um, we've got a lot of funding metadata, license information, information about retractions cor and corrections, that sort of thing. And we hope this will pick up momentum going forward as people find our metadata more and more useful. We aren't a standards organization, and historically we haven't had a formal schema release procedure, but I'm really starting to put some structure into how we develop our schema. In the past, we really relied on um, kind of ad hoc requests from members to add specific things to our schema um, and updates that are have been related to specific projects. Um, but going forward, I foresee a need for more continuous updates to the metadata we collect and distribute as um, scholarly communication is evolving in the way uh, things are cited is evolving a bit as well. Um, so this next update it doesn't contain a significant batch of new metadata, but instead it flushes out and makes adjustments to what we currently collect. Um, I see it as positioning ourselves for the future. It's a good start and it's a good way to start a more public conversation with those of you who provide metadata to us and those of you who use our metadata. Um, I'm really collecting, I'm really concentrating on collecting and not distributed, distributing metadata for this update. Um, we can decide what we want to collect in general terms, but it's really most effective when we understand what our members are able to send us and how they are able to send it to us. Um, as you, I'm sure you know, we have our own fairly rigid metadata schema um, and it, it aligns with some other standards in some ways, but we really want to evolve into more alignment with JATS, for example, and other metadata specifications so that our members can easily send us the metadata they already have without too much trouble. Uh, and there is a lot of work to be done on that front and I'm not being too naive about it, but um, this update doesn't address everything by, by far, but I think it's a step in the right direction. And this is the first of hopefully many requests for um, feedback and community involvement. Um, as we progress with developing these updates, I'll also have more information about how the metadata will be expressed in JSON from our REST API, and ho hopefully we'll be able to get feedback from that as well. Um, before I dive into the specifics of what we're updating, um, I want to just mention briefly how we help to hope to develop our metadata going forward. We hope to be very open about it. Um, this means open requests for feedback like this. Um, regular updates of our schema. Um, we've gone years without updates in the past, and that's largely, in, in some cases, that's been because we haven't needed to make updates. Um, but sometimes it's just been because we haven't really had any formal procedures or anyone really in charge of our, uh, our metadata strategy. Um, we're going to ask for more community involvement. 
and we also we really want there to be no surprises for our members. Um, it's it's a bit of a challenge, and um, we do have limited resources on our end, like you probably do on yours. Um, things are really changing in scholarly communications, and our members often have conflicting needs that we need to sort out. But this is, I think, the best approach for us and for our community. And we're hoping that by making these updates conversations instead of edicts, we'll be able to all move forward and we'll be able to collect some good quality metadata. So our specific priorities for our upcoming update are to um, expand identifier support. Um, we're going to start collecting a range of identifiers and I'll get more into detail on that. Um, we want, we're doing some work on further identifying and crediting contributors. Um, we really want to improve support for data citation and um, we really want to improve our support for the provenance of a metadata record. So who's published the item the, re the record links to as opposed to who's responsible for registering the DOI. Um, we want to make that very clear in our metadata. And there's some other little bits and pieces that I'll get into. Um, so we, we are proposing to break backwards compatibility with this update, but I don't want anyone to go into a panic. Um, the changes I'm proposing, it, it's not a complete overhaul, so you don't have to adapt to a completely new schema. Um, we're just making some adjustments to how we handle roles and affiliations. And in the process, we're making some other changes to contributor information as well. And also this is a proposal. Um, it's, I, I think it's a good one, but you know, if we get a lot of negative feedback, obviously we'll have to ch change our plans. Um, another really important point I want to make is that we're not going to move to this new schema and then deprecate all of the old schema. Um, We'd like to do that eventually. I think we currently um, support 12 versions of our um, metadata input schema, the R deposit schema, and that, that can be a challenge. I mean, we're going to have to deprecate some things at some time, but I know that there are a lot of processes and workflows and platforms that really rely on sending metadata to Crossref, and um, we, we would not, cut you off um, without fair warning. And by fair warning, I mean like many months or even years. I mean, I, I, I think that would be a very big change for us. Um, so I'm hoping we can support both the old schema and the new schema in parallel because they aren't very that really all that different. Um, but if it, it turns out that we can't, I think we can include the metadata we want to include it just it won't be very elegant it'll be confusing it'll be messy and it's not the sort of thing that we can enforce through our metadata schema because we'll have to have things represented in two different ways and sort that out um, on the deposit processing side which means that instead of being able to check your metadata and make sure it's good before you send it to us you'd have to be a little more reliant on our submission logs which we really try to avoid so I'm hoping the back, the changes I'm proposing work for everyone, but um, I don't want anyone to be afraid that they're going to have to invest a lot of money in changing their systems, you know, within the next few months, because that that is not what I'm proposing. Okay. So on to the updates. Um, a big change is that we'll be adding support for identifiers for people, names, and organizations. Um, we really feel. I mean, for um, reasons I don't think I need to go into, we're very pro-identifier. They're really a good way to conclusively identify and disambiguate eight pieces of metadata. Um, we currently support ORCID IDs and will continue to do so. Um, but there are many contributors that can't, for example, register an ORCID ID because they're dead or they don't have an ability to curate an ORCID record and they, you know, maybe they published something in the 1800s, they can't create an ORCID re record for themselves, and that's the way ORCID, ORCID works. So we do want to support a range of author identifiers. Um, 
We're also very keen on supporting ROAR as an organization ID, but we've had some really compelling requests to expand organization ID support to other types of IDs as well. Um, so we're hoping by accepting a range of identifiers, um, we'll, that'll really help us expand the services we provide for um, identifiers that we really want to support, like ORCID IDs and ROAR that um, we have good uh, relationships with that we can kind of do some um, sharing of services and that sort of thing. So our plan for expanding the support for identifiers is to start with identifiers for people and organizations. Um, we're going to accept all identifiers registered with identifiers.org. Um, and we'll continue to develop surfaces for open community led identifiers like ROAR and ORCID. Um, we, yeah, at, at this point, I don't think we can really validate against all identifiers. I think we're really gonna concentrate on um, collecting good quality metadata with ROAR and ORCID IDs. But um, I, I'm hoping that publishers will want to send us ISNIs and other ID, IDs like that as well, because there's a demand for them and we've had a lot of our members ask to send, send them for various reasons. All right, so we have, we're, we're proposing to expand support for identifiers. We really want to support credit as well because we've had a lot of requests for that and it's a good way to capture um, contributor roles. So I'm kind of presenting this as an overall contributor update. Um, our goals for refining the contributor section of our metadata is to extend identifier support and support credit, but we also want to make name support less Western centric. I'll go into a bit more detail about, about that. Um, we want to refine our affiliation support um, and expand support for organizational authors. So our current contributor, XML, it's pretty basic. Um, it does a good enough job. Um, It's, um, it collects the basics like given name, we have surname, uh, basic affiliation information. Um, there are some ways it can be improved and there's some limitations. We only accept one role and we have a very limited number of roles that we support for contributors. Um, our affiliation is basically a string, you know, you can put whatever you want a collection of words in the affiliation tag um, and we have recommendations for what uh, members should put in there but um, they're not always followed so it, it's a it's a bit of a hodgepodge some of the um, I don't think our affiliation metadata that we have right now is is very good honestly I'll be frank um, another limitation or confuse point of confusion in the um, our current contributor metadata is that we have this idea of an organization as an author, which is, is fairly common. Um, we call an organization or corporate author or group author organization. I think they're more commonly called corporate author or group author or some other terms. Um, organization really confuses people. We get a lot of affiliation information dumped into that tag. Um, which is it's completely understandable, um, but it doesn't really work. It um, makes it look like the affiliated institutions are authoring a journal article, for example. Um, we also only support limited metadata for organization. We don't allow um, any affiliation IDs or um, anything beyond just an organization name. So proposal to change for pro changes to person names specifically. Um, we're not gonna change given name. I'm suggesting I'd like to change surname to family name. That's just a more inclusive term. Not everyone has a surname or can, you know, the, their family name isn't a surname. Um, I think that's commonly accepted now, but I, you know, our schema was created 20 years ago. So um, I think now's a good time to change it, that it does break backwards compatibility. Um, 
we ha we will still support the ORCID specific tag because we have some services that use this, but we might fold it into um, our proposal for including identifiers in the future um, with lots of warning, of course. Um, we do have a tag called name style that was an attempt um, a few years ago to collect information about alternate names, but it wasn't really promoted or documented um, and it's not really used. So I'm proposing we re replace that with alternate name. I want to align some of the um, vocabulary we use with what uh, JATS recommends. Um, another kind of, uh, I'll just call it a quirk of our schema is that we do when we currently require a surname for every submission. So if someone just has a given name instead of a surname, you know, people with one name, they don't, it's obviously not a surname because it's a, it's a single term. Um, that needs to be kind of shoved into our surname field. And most publishers don't already have that in the surname field. So it's just a, another step for them to transform that, that, that causes problems. And also we'll add a, identifier support. Um, so what is this going to look like? So I'll just start with alternate names. I think it's pretty straightforward. We'll just allow a number of repeatable alternate names um, tags um, that will support an optional name style tag and a language tag. And um, you can provide different variations of names just as a string. And that can be used for nicknames, aliases, and names in different character sets. Um, we'll be supporting identifiers for names like isney is a good example i think that's the most commonly requested one um, we'll use a contrib id tag um, and you can flag a contrib id type um, and that can be used for um, that can be repeatable to, to include a number of identifiers with a contributor so I had mentioned uh, the limitations of the organization field. It's limited to just a name and it often gets confused. So I'm kind of on the fence about this a little bit. So I would love feedback on this proposal. Um, I'd like to change the term organization to collab just because that's what JATS uses. And I think it, uh, so many of our members use JATS. It make, just makes it a little easier to map. Um, to that, but uh, you know, many of our members may already be using the organization, so it might be a additional burden. So I, I'd love to feel to get some feedback on that. Um, and we're going to break out the metadata within that a bit. Um, so in, include a, a name, um, add a role type. This is where the credit information will get into be added, and I'll um, go into that in more detail in a bit. And then also the repeatable identifiers here. Um, so just to go a little more into detail about credit, um, a credit is a contributor roles taxonomy. Um, it's used to represent the roles typically um, played by contributors in, in scholarly outputs. Um, it goes beyond author and edit, editor. Um, and there's an increasing need to recognize these additional contributors because they are contributing and, and um, they, we want to link the funding data to scholarly outputs and we want to link all of the people involved to this whole network of scholarly information. So I think a good way to do that is including these people in Crossref metadata records. Um, we're adopting this because contributor types are very limited. We have our own limited set of terms. Um, I'm really planning to actively adopt existing taxonomies. I mean, that's what you need to do um, to be consistent across organizations. Um, we, we don't need to be generating our own set of terms within Crossref. Um, and we've had feedback from our members that it's becoming more and more useful and, and many of our members are already um, collecting credit and would be able to send it to us eventually. So the current roles we have are very limited, as you see here. We have author, editor, chair, translator, and then we have a bunch of roles specific to our peer review content type that was added recently. Um, on the left-hand side over here, you can see the credit roles um, that are added. Um, 
I have um, in the more detailed Google Doc I'm sending around, I've, I'm proposing that these terms, we're going to um, turn them into like a more machine readable string, like all lowercase underscores instead of spaces, that sort of thing within our metadata, just because it's easier to process and then it eliminates all kinds of errors that happen. Anytime you throw a space into something, an attribute, it, it, in my experience, that's, you're just asking for trouble. We've just had, had bad experiences with it. So um, that is part of my more detailed proposal. So if you're invested in credit, please take a closer look at that. Um, so the specific role uh, changes to how we handle contributors. We want to retire the contributor role attribute, which is something that um, breaks backwards compatibility, and replace it with a new repeatable role tag. Um, I've modeled this on what um, Jets for R suggests. I don't know if if you're all not familiar with that. Jets for R is um, a, a working group. It's a I a NISO committee at this point, I believe, that um, makes recommendations on how you should um, tag your JATS metadata. And they have a uh, very well fleshed out recommendation for handling credit. I have a question. Uh, will you be including the credit data for whether an author is leading, equal, or supporting? Um, we were planning to just adopt the taxonomy, um, but I can look into that a bit further. Um, we, we currently in our metadata, we, we, we just support first and additional authors. We don't get more into detail than that, um, but that is something we could consider for this or our future update. So thanks for the suggestion. Um, okay, so I, I have another question about credit. The credit roles seem to be mostly nouns that are not obviously related to a person. So how, how would one interpret software with regards to a person? Um, my interpretation on that is that it would be someone, the person, creating the software. Um, that's a, a bit more detailed. Um, that might be a good a question for the people maintain, maintaining credit. So I can make a look, uh, note to look more into that. Okay, someone's asking about the timeline for the, when these changes will be released. We unfortunately don't have this. Um, we will be taking feedback through January 15th, and then I have to work with our technical team to figure out how we can implement some of these things um, and whether we'll up, um, be including them in a single update or rolling them out over multiple updates. I think it, the metadata changes are pretty, the schema changes are pretty straightforward, but there might be some significant development work for some of these proposals. Um, but here I have an example of what um, we're proposing credit, credit will look like in your XML. So you can have these repeatable roles um, with the vocabulary flagged, um, either credit or our cross ref specific vocabulary. That leaves um, the door open for other vo vocabularies if um, they start picking up steam and um, we feel it's prudent to adopt them. We can add that in. Um, to what we support. Um, and my proposal is that the roles, you, you can either send it in as it's um, defined up top here, um, just as a closed tag, pretty simple. Um, we've had a request that um, we support credit the way uh, Jets for r recommends in that um, you can have these defined terms that align with a taxonomy, um, but that there's also this um, kind of free text field if you happen to call um, a specific role something different within your metadata and you want that reflected in your metadata record. Um, another suggestion was that we include other 
as an author role that's not in credit, but I've heard a rumor that it might be added or supported. Um, so that is something that we're considering including as well. All right, um, so moving on to affiliation metadata, we currently just accept a single string of affiliation metadata. As I mentioned previously, that can cause problems. There's not a, a lot you can do with it. Um, if the metadata is good, you can maybe pull out those text strings and parse them in some way, but there isn't really a way to sort by location and we don't support any kind of organization identifier. Um, and we really want to um, add support for organization identifiers. So the proposal is to break this out a bit um, and adopt our current structure. We have an ins existing institution structure for capturing institution names that we use elsewhere in, this, in the schema. So um, everything other than institution name would be optional. Um, we'd hope you'd be able to provide that to us, but if you're not able to, you can just, you know, in include the name. Um, but we're adding acronym, we're adding place. Um, I'm adding this, this is new to the institution field, just a, a country tag. Um, I've, I think a lot of members are able to send us that sort of meta metadata and we'd, we'd be following the, the ISO um, country. Um, Code. I, I forget the number. Um, I think it's in my uh, proposal though. Um, so that, that can make that machine readable. So anyone is extracting affiliation uh, information down the road um, would be able to sort um, research outputs by country affiliation, that sort of thing. We are also adding this institution ID tag. Um, so that way we can uh, support ROAR IDs, for example, in the metadata. All right, so um, there's a lot to say about data citation, but it's beyond the scope of what we're talking about now. Um, I'm not gonna give you a whole spiel about why you should be citing data, but I know that it's, it's, it's something that we think is very important and we want to support it well and we don't currently support it very well to be frank so um, this hopefully will um, change that quite a bit um, as many of you who have been crossref members for a while know we collect reference lists in within metadata records and within those um, we currently support data citation in a very basic way, um, it's not really possible to identify a citation as a data citation unless it has maybe a data site DOI included. Um, there are a lot of data out there that don't have DOIs registered for them. Um, so we're proposing to make changes for that. As you can see, if you look at, this is what we currently support. As far as uh, data citation, you can include an unstructured citation. If it did, again, if it didn't have a DOI, you, you wouldn't know that was a data set. I mean, I guess if you could see that it was from Dryad, but otherwise you wouldn't know. Um, and we also, we support unstructured references. We also um, support marked up references. That's a really good way of sending us very precise metadata that we can use to match DOIs to citations. Unfortunately for data sets, uh, you can't send us much metadata. So, you know, if there wasn't a DOI here, you'd have an author name in a year, which is, you know, pretty, it's practically useless. Um, there's not a lot of point in sending that to us if there isn't a DOI um, included. So one of the changes, significant changes we're, prom we're proposing is to add an attribute onto it each citation that will allow you to flag the type of citation you're sending us. Um, I know this is supported by JATS, so I, I think at least some publishers already have that in their metadata. If you don't, um, I hope you'll considering, consider it, but it, it will be optional. Um, we're not, um, trying to make these changes um, as disruption-free as possible. Um, 
we're going to add support for other identifiers within the citation markup. And we're also adding support for a generic item level title that I'm calling for now item title. Um, there's a lot of discussion about what the appropriate term should be. I know that JETS, um, there's some discussion at the JETS level as well. So um, that might change, but the, the intention is to add support for a ge generic um, title. Um, so what's this going to look at like? So if you look at this example of a marked up data set, as you can see that there's a lot more going on here than in the previous example. You can see that this is a data set. You can see what the title of the data set is. Um, you can see a, an example of another identifier for a da data set. There's a range of um, identifiers across disciplines that can be used. Um, we won't be able to do anything with these identifiers, but we can pass them along. So this is really beneficial for those of you who distribute your references um, and make them open via our APIs. Um, I think this will, this will be a, a, re a real benefit to you. Um, so a little less dramatic change for an unstructured citation, but you can flag this as a data set so people will know, okay, this is a data citation. Uh, this is a journal article citation. This is a book citation. And down the road, hopefully that'll help everyone um, improve matching uh, DOIs to citations because that's a, it's a bit of an art. It's very it's fairly complex. So explicitly saying, okay, this is a journal article. No, this is a data set. Can only be beneficial. All right. So. I mentioned that we want to make changes to how we handle pro the provenance, the cert, um, provenance in a metadata record. Where it's actually not a big change. Um, currently, a book publisher, for example, includes publisher information in a book submission because that's considered bibliographic information. It's used when citing a book. We don't support that for journal articles. So we are going to add that in for journal articles. Um, so if you, if you're a member who registers on behalf of an association, for example, you can put that association's name in the metadata so they can be flagged in the met metadata specifically as the publisher of a journal or a journal article, that sort of thing. Um, it, it's a simple change, but it's something we're not doing now. So I just want to highlight it so that people understand, but it's important and you should, and that when we make these changes, you should consider including this metadata. Um, and since we're um, expanding the, we're, we're paying closer attention to this whole idea of the, the publisher within our metadata, um, we're going to expand that and allow, and allow multiple publisher names and allow an, a language tag so that the name, you can provide a name in, in multiple languages or al alphabets. Um, we're also going to add the country code to that. And we are also planning to add, it's not on this slide, but add um, the additional like organization identifier information. So you can, I, I know most publishers have Aurora ID example, so you could include that in this. So I've got a few questions about um, the timeline and the plans for releasing the schema update. So I'm, I'm going to save those to the end because I do have a, a, a slide going through that. Um, but I have another question. If data site has a reverse lookup where you can see Crossref DOIs in the data site metadata. Um, we, that, it's, it's not through the um, regular data site search, but um, Datacite and Crossref both make those connections via event data. So you can capture when uh, data site DOI is cited by it within a Crossref rec uh, record and, and vice versa. So it's, it's a separate API from our main REST API, but um, that information is available 
through event data, and that's uh, an open API. Um, both Crossref and Datasite run their own version of the API, but they intersect in some ways. And when we work closely with them, we're hoping to be more aligned in the future on that. So we have another question about citation types. Um, are we, will we restrict the allowed metadata elements for the citation? Um, we're not restricting the allowed me me metadata elements for a citation at all. So we're hoping you'll just add in the new metadata. Um, so if you, if you, so if, if you're sending in a journal article and one of the um, if you're citing a journal article, for example, we're not going to exclude you from including an ISBN. Um, I don't think we're going to get that quite that sophisticated. And I also want, don't want to be that restrictive just because um, a lot of these, It, it sounds strange to say I want, I want to be more open than the rest of our, <laughs> our metadata, but I think in citations, there's a bit more room for flex, flexibility. So, so we're basically going to allow, you know, if you flag something as a journal article, you'll be in, able to include all of the citation markup, just not the, one, not just the ones appropriate for a journal article. Um, that might not result in a good match um, if the metadata is wrong. But I mean, if, if it's appropriate for some reason, then um, it, it'll be a good thing to include it. All right. Another thing I'd like to do, we've had over the years had a lot of um, feedback on the way we handle dates. Um, we currently support um, a few types of dates, but I think the one that's required is a publication date. And we, you can flag a publication date as online or print. Um, and I think it's often very hard. It's hard for us. It's hard for um, people using the metadata for citation to flag uh, what the preferred date for citation is if there are multiple dates provided. Um, some publishers will have an online first date and then another online date. Um, some publishers will want the print date to be the primary date used in citations. Some will want the online date. It's really, there's no way to determine conclusively what date you should be used for, should be used for citing something um, if multiple dates are provided. There's just too much variation. So I'm proposing we include a citation date flag um, so that someone can, so that you can identify what date you'd prefer to be used for citing something. Again, this, this will be optional. Um, we've also had requests for submit, submitted date. We have, um, we've added acceptance date in our metadata. So um, some members would also like to provide the submitted date. Um, we've had requests for a copyright date to capture the specific copyright dates from a publication. Um, so, I know there's a lot of variation in practice across publishers on how you handle um, dates, how these dates are expressed. So I'd really love more feedback on what we should be doing with dates. Some other small updates we plan to make. Um, we're going to add e-location ID as an element. Um, e-location ID is the term used by DATS for article numbers or article IDs. Um, we do allow you to tag article IDs in your metadata right now, but it's, it, it's not really, it's kind of, it's not what I would consider presented at, as top level metadata. So a lot of new members don't realize they can do that. A lot of people tag it incorrectly because it's not straightforward. Um, and it is, it's top level metadata. It's something you use when identifying something, you know, it's, from online publications, it's just, it's replaced um, the idea of page numbers. So I think we really need to just support that as top level metadata. And since JATS uses the term e-location ID, um, I'm preferred to lose, use that just to make it as clear as possible. Um, 
we're going to add citations to peer reviews, and that's a newer content type. Citations weren't included, but anyone who's reviewed something or been involved in the peer review process knows that um, citations, that reviews do cite things. Um, I think there might be some technical work needed to do that on our end because um, we don't want citations for peer reviews to be automatically included in the citation matches generated by our cited by service we'd like you to be able to toggle that on and off so um, i think that needs to be done judiciously but i think it does need to be done um we'd uh, it also um just want to encourage people um to make suggestions for anything they want in their metadata um, we've had a lot kind of a trickle of suggestions over the years and I, I really want to start collecting them and um, collaborating more with the community on um, moving our metadata schema forward and meeting your needs. Um, we do have some plans for the future of things we'd like to tackle. Um, we want to kind of get a handle on how versions are expressed in your metadata. Um, We've had a lot of requests for a machine readable open access identifier. Um, I think I don't think that's the sort of thing that Crossref should create and curate, but we're trying to see what else is out there that we can adopt um, that works for everyone. Um, I think we'd really like to include an article type taxonomy for journal articles so you can flag a book review as a book review a case study as a case study that sort of thing um, but i think that's the sort of thing that needs a lot of conversations um, i don't know that there's a list out there that 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 exists so um, although i don't we don't we much prefer to adopt other taxonomies. I think that's so specific to our needs. We're probably just gonna have to bite the bullet and come up with one on, on our own. Um, we do have concrete plans to make some changes. Um, we have started registering, working with funders to register identifiers for grants, and we want to include those in our funding metadata. So that's a change that will be coming. Um, we are also going to be registering identifiers for conferences for at conference events as opposed to conference proceedings and we've been working with a working group on that for a while so that you can expect that to come early next year and we'll be integrating that into our um our main metadata um, schema as well a bit so the next steps I will be collecting feedback through January 15th and then we plan to do a bit more some have a bit more of an open process for this. I'm going to summarize the feedback and, and communicate that to the community. Um, I'm going to share a metadata schema like a fully uh, flushed out XSD file and some examples of what um, metadata deposits will look like. Um, I don't think we'll do a long request for feedback for that, but we do, we'll, we will be asking um, for some input on that. Um, we'll share our output plans, like what this new metadata will look like in our, um, our JSON output, um, what filter, filters and facets you can expect from our REST API. Um, we're, at that point, I think once we've collected feedback, we'll be able to share more concrete timelines for implementation. And in the lead up to implementation, we'll be um, hopefully have, it, have lots of volunteers to test what we're doing um, and make sure it works for you. I think some of these changes will, some of them are just straightforward metadata changes. Some of them might need some refinement of the, how the system processes the records and uh, may generate some specific error messages, that sort of thing. So um, we hope to work with you all to, to um, kind of hammer out a process that works for you in the testing phase, and then we'll implement um, for the wider community. Um, Okay, so someone's made a suggestion that uh, JATS 1.2 has the version of record date. 
Um, yeah, that's a good suggestion. I'll make a note of that. And, and maybe I'll maybe I'll update our proposal to include that. All right. So if you have feedback, um, please feel leave comments in the proposal. It's a Google Doc, so you can um, leave um, comments within the document. If you have a, a larger point to make or even a small point, just you can send me an email specifically. Um, we do have our schema in our GitLab. It has its own um, repository in GitLab. Um, I hope to make more use of that in the future, but I do monitor the issues that are created there. So if you have a, a request, particularly one that relates to maybe how something's expressed in, this, in the schema when we get to that point, uh, please feel free um, to create a GitLab issue. Um, and I will be, as I mentioned, I will be collecting feedback through January. Um, I also wanted to mention that I have a metadata practitioners interest group. Um, we've had a few calls this year. Um, my plan is to have monthly calls kind of really pick up the pace in 2020. Um, we discuss a variety of topics. When we were just getting started, we talked a lot about what, um, how the community could help Crossref and uh, how um, we could get specific feedback on as we develop our metadata for, further. Um, I've mainly been working on the publishers sending us our metadata. I find that um, there's a need for a lot of metadata um, out there, but it's um, we can only really meet that need if we work with the people sending us the metadata. That, so that's what I really want to focus on now, and I hope to expand that group and maybe have, um, I don't know if we need two groups or um, of you know metadata providers and metadata consumers or a hybrid group. I don't know how it's going to look. It's, it's all very new and we're very excited about it. But for now, we're really focused on those of you sending us the metadata because I feel like we have a little bit of remedial work that we're doing for now. Um, we're hoping to form some working groups for specific projects. Um, we've got a group that's very interested in um, being uh, sending metadata to us in JATS and transforming that into the cross cross schema. We've got um, a lot of people who are interested in helping us develop our preprints metadata further. Um, and we have a lot of people who are introduced in, really interested in supporting new types of content within the Crossref schema. Um, so look for more information on that. And if you want to join in, please uh, feel free to drop me a line and I will add you to our um, let my list of participants. Right. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, I'll stick around for a while so you can ask. Um, and I will, um, I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning, but I'll send around the slides um, and as well as um, a recording of this webinar for those of you who want to relive our time together. All right. Thanks for um, joining in.